Hey, I'm Joe. Today on Next Level Bullshit, we're looking at California's drought problem. California State Assembly member Shannon Grove believes that California's drought problem is because of abortion. Texas was in a long period of drought until Governor Rick Perry signed the fetal pain bill. It rained that night. Or is it because of the EPA? Deal with it, but now, now you've got added conditions that are not, I don't think, I don't think we can blame the weather for. I mean, today's drought is more politically driven, I think, than it is weather related. An environmental protection law called the Endangered Species Act is forcing water from the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. These waters previously went to farmers and urban areas. Now this water is flushed into the San Francisco Bay to protect a three inch fish called the Delta Smelt. This year alone over- Or is it a manufactured event to push Agenda 21? They were having meetings in 98, 99, and 2000, with different state officials to go along with it secretly, and this all came out, Schwarzenegger was in on one of the meetings before he was even governor, on how to game the electricity. And they said, we found in studies in third world countries, if we have some rolling blackouts that we control, and we'll admit we're doing it, it'll create the perception of artificial scarcity, and then we can double or triple prices. And that's exactly what Enron did, some days making a billion dollars a day, scamming the daylights out of the Californians. Maybe it's the almond farmers that are to blame. California's almonds constitute a lucrative, multi-billion dollar industry in a fiscally tenuous state that is also, as you know, in the middle of the worst drought in recent history. That drought is so dire that experts are considering adding a fifth level to the four-tiered drought scale. That's right, D5. But each almond requires 1.1 gallons of water to produce, as Alex Park and Julia Lurie at Mother Jones reported earlier this year. And 44% more land in California is being used to farm almonds than was 10 years ago. Whatever it is, California has a big problem. So big, in fact, it is now a criminal act to waste water. Amid evidence that existing conservation measures are not working, the State Water Resources Control Board took the unprecedented step of declaring certain types of water waste a criminal infraction similar to a speeding violation. Water use deemed excessive such as allowing landscape watering to spill into streets and hosing off sidewalks and driveways can be subject to fines of $500 per day. Social media vigilantes like Tony Kokorin upload videos drought shaming California residents. Look at that, going down the drain. Valencia, what's the address? I don't know, but it's by SCV Landscaping that does this. SCV Landscaping, they don't know what they're doing. Look at the water going down the drain. What is the address? Oh, 23503. Look at that. As it turns out, they sort of deserve it. California is full of assholes. Steve Juhas. A resident of Rancho Santa Fe was quoted in a Washington Post article, people should not be forced to live on property with brown lawns, golf on brown courses, or apologize for wanting their gardens to be beautiful. We pay significant property taxes based on where we live. Followed by this gem, and no, we are not all equal when it comes to water. Fun fact, he's part of the Santa Fe Irrigation District with a population of about 20,000 people. Those residents use 426 gallons per capita every fucking day. That's over four times the national average as measured by the USGS. 
That means an average family uses all the water in this tank every fucking day. Or the Santa Fe district uses the equivalent of not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six of these one and a half million gallon water towers every fucking day. That's 250 million gallons every month. Or what it takes to fill the largest swimming pool in the world in the San Alfonso del Mar Resort in Chile. There's also the town Bermuda Dunes, who receives water from a private company, Myoma Dunes Water District. Nestled in the Dust Bowl that is Southern California's inland empire, the roughly three square mile hamlet gets its name from the swanky and deeply emerald green Bermuda Dunes Country Club. The Water Board's report puts the population for the area at 6,159 thirsty souls. So thirsty, in fact, the town's RGPCD, that's residential gallons per capita day, actually went up over the duration of the report from 330 gallons per person to 379. The state average is far, far away from that. Statewide average GPCD for April 2015 was 91 gallons, an increase compared to the March statewide average of 82.8. It's looking so bleak, California is trying to tap more water out of the Colorado River to ease groundwater demand. James Uckland, director of the Colorado Conservation Board, shared some tough words. If anybody thought we were gonna roll over and say, okay, California, you're in a really bad drought, you get to use the water that we're gonna use. They're mistaken. The Colorado River is already dangerously low. Anyone who has seen Lake Powell recently can confirm that. The river provides water to 40 million people in several of the driest states in the country as a result of a 1922 agreement. Looking at the drought monitor, you can clearly tell who's the biter conservationist. There's even stories about how a drier, landlocked state, Arizona, is much better at conservation. But what's really infuriating about this picture is they have all this water in the Pacific Ocean to work with. Yes, water desalination. With California heading into its 12th major drought, the concept is starting to catch on again. The idea has been around for a long time. In fact, in 1790, Thomas Jefferson was presented a sample of desalinated water by Jacob Isaacs, which produced this report in 1791. The process for doing this by simple distillation is so efficacious as to authorize the assertion that this desideratum is satisfied to a very useful degree. The technology has greatly improved since then. Now, it's a giant reverse osmosis operation. And California actually has a massive desalination facility going up in Carlsbad that will be world class. Which, surprise, surprise, is not just on time, but will finish early. The $1 billion Carlsbad plant, which uses reverse osmosis to purify seawater, will have the capacity to produce 54 million gallons a day of drinkable water. While helpful, this is still a relative drop in the ocean compared with the 38 billion gallons a day used by Californians on average in 2010. Of course, to get to this momentous drop in the dry bucket achievement in California, they had to fuck up a few times first. My favorite comes from Santa Barbara. Between 1987 and 1992, California was faced with another long drought. By 1991, Santa Barbara residents were faced with a severe shortage. The city's few reservoirs were rapidly drying up despite successful conservation efforts that reduced water use by nearly 40%. City officials requested proposals to identify a new water source. As fears mounted, Santa Barbara residents overwhelmingly approved construction of an emergency desalination plant. Construction of the desalination plant began in May 1991. The plant was completed in March 1992 and successfully produced water during startup and testing. But then it started raining again. So what did those idiots do? 
They mothballed the plant and sold the parts to Saudi Arabia. Uh, which is funny, because now they're trying to get the facility back online for around 55 million. Of course, desalination has its critics, like Henry J. Vox Jr., a water economist at UC Berkeley. Investing in desalination is not a good way to address a drought because by the time you finish it, the drought is over. But when it comes to water, shouldn't we always be planning for the next drought? Making sure we're stockpiling all the time, not just on the rainy days? After all, what Santa Barbara did was the definition of short-sighted. Whatever it is, California, you need to get your shit together. This affects everybody. Now, before we close this episode, I found this to be a really cool program started by Puma. Yeah, the company that makes those shoes. They started environmental profits and losses. Through consultation in the expert community and reviews of relevant current industry and academic publications, we concluded that our most significant environmental impacts are greenhouse gas emissions, water use, land use, air pollution and waste. It is these impacts that are therefore included in the Puma EP&L. Now how fucking cool is that? A company tracking what they're taking and what they're putting back. Should be standard practice, I think. And there it is, a parched episode 52. Our, lap, our last episode on Rachel Dolezal may have broken the record for the number of times batshit crazy appeared in YouTube comments. Michael Lloyd said, that woman is batshit crazy. Maybe you could donate to the NAACP so they can hire someone that isn't. <laughs> Zambi Horty said, I think they need to make her pay her tuition for schooling because she lied and should go to prison for falsifying information that isn't true. Very glad she's being exposed. Survivor Kitten wrote, great to have found you. Can't wait to see just how deep this rabbit hole will go before someone fills it up. And finally, Smokey John added, seriously, best title ever. I bet when she's in Arlington, Virginia, she lies about knowing how to use the three seashells. You won the internet titles this week, Joe. So, what's today's total? Nine. This time, we're taking your suggestions for the charity I give $100 to once that total reaches 100. Now, if you find a story that's bullshit worthy and you want to share it with me, use hashtag NLBS when posting to any social media site. And if you're super motivated, make me a video. If we like it, we'll feature you on our next segment. Of course, you can just email me anytime at joe at nextlevelbullshit.com. Follow us on Twitter in the meantime at the NLBS. Subscribe on YouTube and be sure to watch all our shows on nextlevelbullshit.com. And don't forget to go to the nlbs.spreadshirt.com to get shirts and other cool swag. Now, we're a little winded here at Next Level Bullshit yeah. from all the bullshit. So we're going to take some time off and I'm going to see some sights. And then we're going to be back with a vengeance in July from the bullshit capital of the world, New York City. <laughs>